everybody, and welcome back to Free Fridays. This is Jason Ritchie. I got a C harmonica from Honer with uh, Blue Moon Custom Comb here. And we're going to be playing in the key of G and also D and D minor today while we examine when, where, and if I should be using the three-hole blow. Now, as you might have realized already, or if you're new to this, the two draw and the three blow are tuned to the same note. On this harmonica, that's a G note, but you don't even have to know that. All you have to know is it sounds exactly the same. Two draw and three blow. So first of all, you might be asking yourself, well, why? Why would they do that? Well, when they invented the harmonica in Germany, right, what they wanted it to do was play chords on the bottom. So in order to get that blow chord, what they had to do is they had to tune it to a major triad of C. And then the octave. Then they wanted to put a G chord on the inhale. So they needed to repeat that note. So anyway, we have the note in two different places. They never intended for us to be playing music down there other than chords. Or even... They wanted us to play all that stuff up here. So we could do something like... Anyway, that's the history behind it, but you came here to know how can I use it. All right. All right. So the first example I was giving was kind of a little train thing that I just made up on the spot for this video. That's even a little different than the one I did. If you want to get some good and amazing train rhythms, you really need to check out my man Joe Felisco or Peter Madcat Ruth. And both of those guys will have a whole lot to tell you on the three blow to improve your train chugging. We're gonna be doing a lot with the three blow today. I'm just gonna say that what you can do is use it to recycle air and get different tones. If I were to play that same passage just using two draw, I'm gonna run out of air. Now, sometimes I can get in little exhale breaths. <laughs> right, so I can still play it. Not that fast, so. See, I can't, so what I can do is exhale on the three blow. What I can do is exhale on the three blow and get some of the air back. So that's one of the most obvious things. Like a lot of times when I'm playing a lot of draw notes, I might just choose to exhale on that note just because I need air. Say I'm playing the old boogie chilling. Or if I just wanted to vamp on the bottom. And keep that going. Well, that's all inhale, and I might not be able to exhale in between because I want that driving rhythm. So one thing I can do is alternate the two draw with a three blow. Now I'm tongue blocking the three blow, but you don't have to, okay? But it does have a cool sound to it though. If you wanted to learn it, it would have be helpful to get a cool rhythmic sound. So let's check it out. Right, so there's one thing. You can even use a lot of effects, like a little saxophone effect. Inhaling, inhaling and exhaling on two draw and three blow. All 
I'm a little bit of putting a little bit of a bend to accent the two draw. On Howlin' Wolf's Moaning at Midnight. Right, he does it there too, except on an A harp. All right. So there's the first thing you can do is just use it as a way to maybe change your tone a little bit, but also to recycle air. Another way is if you go back and you look at my video, Don't Be a Harmonica Donkey, what we notice is that some of the most awkward sounding things on the harmonica have to do with when we're blowing in and then out and then again on any particular set of holes, but especially down in the bottom octave. Because the reeds are a little thinner in the top, it can sound a little prettier and a little smoother. But once we get down low, we start getting the donkey sound. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that we can do is use the three blow for a little bit of a smoother sound. Right, instead of the first one, I was using one draw, two blow, three blow, two blow, three blow. The second one I was using one draw, two blow, two draw, two blow. I think the first one sounds a lot better. Instead of first, using three blow, that's two draw, as opposed to. So it's a little subtle thing, but it does make our instrument feel smoother and especially a little jazzier. Let's take a look at that one in context. I'm going over here to an MCCD Sessions Swing Groove in G. All right, here we go with an MCCD Sessions. This one's called Blues Backing Track Swing Groove in G. So I'm gonna show you the difference between using the two draw and the two blow. We'll start with a simple lick like this. Two draw, two blow, two draw, and then two blow. <laughs> got a big big time donkey sound <laughs> so we want to stay away from that so instead of starting on two draw we're going to start on three blow so instead of this i'm going to go three blow two blow three blow two blow three blow here it is See that? And I can also go right back into the two draw, two draw when I don't need to go to the two blow. Thank you. 
or more different ways is enharmonic. I learned that word from Brendan Power, who makes all kinds of crazy harmonicas that do just stuff like this, where you can get the same note as a blow, a bend, a draw, an overblow, and they all apply differently to various forms of application. They can make it sound jazzier or easier to play or Irish or whatever the heck it is, but the note being in a different place and being in achieved a different way can allow it to maybe bend in, slide out, different types of stuff, tongue block, a different chord behind it, all kinds of things. All right, so that is the jazzy element of the three blow. So if you listen to my record with Joe Crown, City Country City, on the song Down and Dirty, Joe is playing this line. On organ. When I first heard it, I tried to do it the way I normally would, which is using two draw, and it sounded like this. And I quickly realized I really didn't like the sound of that, and that why don't I just use the three below? And I got a much, much smoother version. So even there, I'm, I'm going back up and down using the three blow. Right? It's very jazzy, and it, it just makes things swing a little better and sound a little less donkey-like, a lot less donkey-like. Instead of... You hear that? It's just... I, don't, I really don't like that sound about the harmonica. <laughs> so if there's any way I can avoid it, well, I'm going to try to find it. And the three blow is a wonderful way. I'm still learning cool ways of getting that note in there instead of the, the same note on two draw and getting a donkey sound. I'm finding more and more as I get older, there's all kinds of great places to play it, right? What if I'm just walking a triad up? Right? I don't have to go and then skip over a hole, right? So you might be asking yourself, well, then why don't we just use it all the time? Well, the reason not to use it all the time is, number one, sometimes on the harmonica, we need to inhale. We need to inhale to get air back. So number one, the same number one as when why to use three blow is to, is to get rid of air. Well, sometimes the reason we would use two draw instead of three blow is to get air back to inhale. But two draw has a different tone. And because it bends, I can come underneath it and back down. I can go up and down. And put that vibrato on there that gives me that little pitchy vibrato. Three blow, I can't really do that. It's not the same, right? That's with the jaw vibrato. Here's the jaw vibrato on two as best I can. But here's a little pitch throat vibrato. So they both have different purposes. Instead of... There you go. All right. I've been on that a while. All right. So let's move on. I'm going to play some petty music. This one's called Funky Backing Track. 
Mixolydian Blues. Now, if you've seen my videos on Pat Ramsey, you'll know that I think it was Pat Ramsey Lick number one incorporates the three blow. So I'll just show you that I can use that. And if you want to check out that video, you really should. You're going to like this. But you should go check out that video because, I mean, man, this was one of the first things I heard Pat doing that I was like, man, I got to learn that. I didn't know what it was. It was using that three blow. So he'll go four blow, three blow, three half step bend, two draw. It doesn't have to be a bend. It could just be a three draw. Let's turn it up a little bit. I'd have to go from the four blow to the two draw, back to the three bend, back to the two draw, back up to the four blow. Like that. Now I can recycle air, sound smoother, and go faster. That's the three blow in the Pat Ramsey style. Now remember to check out my video on that for some different variations and to get a better handle on what Pat's doing. Last but not least is a demo I'm going to do in third position. So I'm going over here to Quist's D minor blues. So now I'm going to take a look at the way that George Smith, the great George Smith, used the three blow in third position and how we can too. So the first example I'm going to give is a little lick that George used to do where he'd play the three triple bend, three blow, two double bend, one draw. <laughs> So that's, first of all, a great way to save air. Because third position, like cross harp, has a lot of its most important notes on inhales. So getting to use the three blow instead of the two draw lets us get rid of some of the air so we don't suffocate. So it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to go from three blow to two double bend, but you'll get it. The temptation is to go down to two draw, which is perfectly okay, but this way helps you recycle air and arguably can be played faster. Inhale. About the same for me. Each way is pretty great. So here's some of the other reasons I think George liked to use that blow there instead of the two draw. If we go up to the next octave and we take a listen to this same lick. If 
we take a look at the same lick in the second octave, it's the same formation. I'm bending on six draw, blowing out on six, moving down a hole, and then moving down another hole. All draw, except for the blow. Down bottom. So it kind of makes the same formation in our mind. Now, if that wasn't crazy enough, if I switch to a G harmonica and play the same lick in second position on a G, four draw bend, four blow, three half step bend, two draw, it makes the same formation there too. Right, so move it to second, uh, back to third. It's bend, blow, move down a hole, move down a hole. You might have to bend in one place on the third note, but basically it's the same formation. So it allows you to save air, and you're saving bandwidth in your brain, at least for that particular lick, which is part of the blue scale. <laughs> Huh? So we can use it all over the place. We can use it jazzy, we can use it funky, we can do rock and roll kind of Pat Ramsey stuff, or we can do swingy jazz stuff. So that is my lesson today on where and when to use the three blow. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm doing great, guys, and I want to remind you what my friend Brother Lee Mack always says, that today is going to be another great day. Why? Lee Mack says, because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a truth and a lie. So when you wake up in the morning, you might as well tell it something nice. YouTube, you guys are incredible. I appreciate you. More and more, we are becoming a little YouTube channel family. And I am not any kind of cult leader here. <laughs> I am not the guy. I got some answers. Want to know why I have some answers? It's because I had the same questions that you do, right? And you know, I kind of went through a baptism by fire, the same way that you may be going through right now. I was resistant, I was scared, I was afraid I wasn't gonna be any good, that I could never get this stuff. And over time, it started to sink in. But I had to go through a lot of resistance first. Well, you don't have to go through that resistance, right? Just let it happen for you. It's okay. I fought it tooth and nail. I had a very, very long walk with all of this theory stuff and all of this harmonica stuff. Most of these things I had to figure out on my own. There was no YouTube. There were very little very few people talking about this stuff. I would go to see people, Pat Ramsey and Madison Slim, and I'd say, how do you do that? And he'd say, well, I just kind of, and I'd go, all right. And he'd go, yeah, that's it, you'll get it, right? <laughs> and so that's how I came up. So, you know, in a way you got it easier. In another way you don't. You guys are overwhelmed with information. Please remember, that if this particular Free Friday didn't make sense for you, find one that you do like and just spend some time on that single video. Just because it's Free Friday doesn't mean I have to be learning everything every Friday that I teach you. And then on Mondays or Tuesdays with Dennis or, 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 or Liam or, or, or any of these guys are teaching you, right? Ronnie Shellis, right? Right, Tomlin, right? Whatever they're teaching you, Adam Gussel, right? You don't have to absorb it all on the same day, every day of the week that they give it to you. 
find one thing that you like. Maybe it's that little train rhythm. And spend some time on that. You know, what I used to do is, when I did take harmonica lessons, I remember going over to D.W. Gill's house. He was a harmonica player in Maine. And man, I must have been all of 17 years old, 16, 17. And I drove over to his house and I got there and I, I went upstairs and hung out with him. And, and you know, he never even asked me to play harmonica. He sat there for like an hour and 15 minutes and talked. And all he did was talk and tell me about this instrument. And I just sat there and listened. I ne he never once asked me to play or why don't you try that or do this or anything like that. And you know what I did? I recorded it. And then instead of going back for another lesson, I would do five minutes of that recording until I understood that five minutes. And then I would move to the next five. And then sometimes I didn't understand something, I'd fast forward to something I did understand and I'd get that and then I'd go back to the part that I didn't understand. I studied that one cassette every day for a couple of years from that single lesson, right? And I just took what I could understand and I spent a lot of time on it until it sounded good. It's not about achieving what I'm doing in these videos. It's about finding something in the video and then making it sound really good. Even someday making it your own where you can write back to me, geez, Jace, do you ever, do you ever notice this? Check out what happens when you do that. And I'm just like, damn, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, man, well, you're the one who taught it to me. Look how crazy this thing is. It's a perfect circle. Stay tuned for the credits. Thank you everybody for tuning in to Free Fridays right here on YouTube. Subscribe today, click the subscribe button for hundreds of free harmonica lessons. If you like what I'm putting down and you'd like to support the cause, go the extra mile, be sure to visit my Patreon page. Patreon patrons, thank you very much. You're making these lessons an absolute priority in my life, no matter how busy I get. A free lesson happens every Friday. For as low as a dollar a month, that's 25 cents a lesson, you can become a Patreon patron. If you're doing a little better and you can donate more, that's great. Every time you become a Patreon patron, you're helping somebody else out there that doesn't have a credit card, that doesn't have a dollar a month to continue to get free harmonica instruction and much, much more. Remember, we got product reviews here on this channel. We do videos on addiction and bipolar disorder. We got blues stories. We got performance videos and everything right here on Jason Rich's YouTube. Subscribe today. I'd like to thank Honer Harmonicas. And I'd like to thank Blue Moon Harmonicas, making custom parts for any harmonica that you might have at home. Blue Moon has got you. The Lone Wolf Blues Company, pedals, amplifiers, microphones, you name it, much more. Right here out of Louisiana, the Lone Wolf Blues Company is bringing you the best in customer service for almost any kind of amplified blues harmonica needs that you may have. Speaking of amplifiers, harp gear amplifiers, check them out. The very best harp gear right out of Ocala, Florida. I got a website, www.mooncat.org. Check me out on mooncat.org. I got tour dates happening all over the place. I'm going all over the country this year, playing tour dates with JJ Appleton, with Damon Fowler, with JP Soares, with my own band, with Joe Crown, all kinds of people. www.mooncat.org. T-shirts, lesson information, all of that. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. We do this every single Friday, and then every now and then I throw you some more stuff right here at Jason Rich's YouTube. A moon cat, love and appreciate all y'all. Thank you.